Uh, hi, you guys. This is Riza with Full Awakening here to bring you your daily 1111 teaching and meditation. I'm a little late and we're even my background's looking disheveled. Um, the baby woke up right before I was going to get on camera with you guys and I had to nurse her and try to console her so that I could run away and come do this meditation. And every time something like that happens and the baby is being fussy or I'm dealing with my kids and trying to keep up with my practice, I just remember that this is a real life situation and that everyone has their own unique situations that they're in. And motherhood actually taught me to be a little bit more flexible and diligent with my practice. So I was an avid meditator before I became a mother. And then after becoming a mother, I thought, how do I maintain the spiritual practice? I don't have hours to sit and meditate and create art and do all these things anymore. So I started doing just little, these little blurps, five minutes here, five minutes there, meditating in the shower is one of my favorites and just turning all of life into a meditation. So here we are. Today's subject is held and free. And I selected a reading for you. Um, this reading actually really relates to something I've been thinking of and held and free is a term that has come up in some of my dreamer circles. So right now we're holding dream circles. We might open these up to the public soon. Um, we're thinking of them as a dream doula circle. So there's a lot of dreams for the new world that are coming up inside people and we want to see how we can manifest those dreams, how we can nurture them into form. So I'm going to do a reading from Untamed. This is a term that Glennon Doyle uses, is held and free, and I just found the perfect reading for today. Okay, so in this, she's talking about, just to give you some background, she's talking about the Jesus story and how she no longer wants to be considered a Christian. She doesn't agree with the church necessarily, but she does want to hold on to the Jesus story that she feels like it has um, some validity and some meaning for our time. Okay, so I'm just going to start at a point and read to the end here. Okay. I kind of want to read this upper section. Okay, I'm going to start a little bit earlier than I thought I was going to start because I'm seeing some words that I, I want to, to say. Okay. They saw that killing one another for money was absurd because what lies within each person is more valuable than gold. They saw that slavery and hierarchy are evil because no one is born more worthy of freedom and power than another. They saw that violence and greed destroy the powerful just as they destroy their victims because to dishonor one's hu another's humanity is to bury one's own. They saw that humanity's only hope for salvation was a truer, more beautiful order of things. And they asked themselves, what kind of story might help people see beyond the lie that they've been taught that some are worth less and others more? What kind of story might return people to their wild, to what they knew of love before they were trained to fear one another? What kind of story might inspire people to revolt against and live beyond the religious, religious, religiously dominating hierarchical machine that was killing them? Ooh, that is a string of difficult to say words, but very important words. I'm gonna read it once more. What kind of story might inspire people to revolt against and live beyond the religiously dominated hierarchical machine that was killing them? Here was their idea. Let's rethink the stories that we've been telling about God. Let's dare to imagine that God is less like the powerful men who run the world. And let's imagine that God is actually a person like the person who's, who those rulers are killing. Let's imagine that God is a vulnerable baby, born to a poor single mother, among the group most despised by the religious and political elite. He was the least of these back then, and they pointed to him. God is in him, they said. Had these wise storytellers lived in modern America, they might point to a poor black transgendered woman or an asylum seeking toddler alone in a deten detainment center and say, God is in this one, this one, the one on the outermost ring of the rankings that we've made, made up about who matters, this one, the one farthest from whom we have, we have centered. This one is made of our same flesh, blood, and spirit. When they hurt her, we hurt our own kin. This one is one of us. This one is us. 
So let us protect her. Let us bring her gifts and kneel in front of her. Let us fight for her and her family to her to have every good thing that we want for ourselves and our family. Let us love this one as we love ourselves. The point of this story was never that this one is more God than the rest of us. The point was that if we find good in those that we've been trained to see as bad, that if we find worth in those we've been conditioned to see as worthless, if we find ourselves in those that we've in, been indoctrinated to see as other, then we become unable to hurt them. When we stop hurting them, we stop hurting ourselves. When we stop hurting ourselves, we begin to heal. The Jesus idea is that justice casts the widest net possible so that every last one of us is inside. Then there are no others. There's only us. Instead, inside one net, we are free from our cages of fear and hate, and instead bound to one another. The revolutionary idea that every last one of us is both held and free. That is our salvation. Okay, again, that's a reading from whoop, Untamed by Glennon Doyle. Ah, and I love that. You know, I was, my husband was telling me about this article he was reading yesterday saying that people feel enjoyment energy from hatred, which made me so sad, but it makes a lot of sense. I think it stimulates that tribal gene that we have or our tribal background, our history, um, to see ourselves as separate from another and that all of our anger and frustration and hatred and really those really violent feelings of aggression that come from our own feelings of discomfort and sadness and feeling of powerlessness, that we get to cast that as anger, which feels very powerful, onto someone that we see as outside of us or outside of our tribe. So I think what Glennon Doyle is saying here is that, you know, we can create new myths. We can create new stories that we agree to. And our stories greatly, greatly impact how we perceive reality. So if we realize that we have been trained, we have been socialized, indoctrinated to believe that certain people are different from us, are other from us, if instead we reach to understand them and to see them as a part of us, a part of our community, a part of our family, a part of ourselves, and we stretch our net out wider and wider and wider to encompass all people, then we can start to be less afraid, more gentle, more open, and we can live a more beautiful life, right? My hope is that we not only learn as individuals to stretch that net farther and farther and farther, include more and more and more people, especially the people we find to have really, really different beliefs than us. Um, I've struggled with this myself. I mean, I have people in my own family who have very different values than me, very different beliefs than me. And I find in myself that discomfort, that fear, that aggression come out. And I have to really, really soften that and try to put my own story down, my own string of judgments so that I can actually see that person clearly. And that's always my prayer, to be able to see clearly so that I can understand. And if I can understand, then I can start to accept them, accept myself, and then I can start to love them and love myself. I love in here, I think it was in the reading that I just did, but it might've been on the previous page, this idea that we can't really love ourselves until we learn, we can't really love others until we learn to love ourselves and vice versa, that those things go hand in hand. So healing ourselves and loving others and healing others, all of that is one big kit and caboodle. And perhaps if we're able to stretch our net to include all humans, we'll be able to stretch that net to include all beings. Um, I would love to see us treat this earth and all of her creatures as sacred, not one above another. So that's going to be our subject for contemplation today. And how can we, in our practice, come into our hearts and begin to broaden that net of us, bring that net of us wider and wider and wider instead of seeing people as other and enjoying the power of casting our own aggression that comes from our discomfort onto that other that has a different belief system or different history, different experience different values than we're having, right? Let's, let's see if we can expand that. Okay, let's get our singing bowl out. It's Memorial Day, you guys, and no one, people are not online right now, which is giving me hope that people are 
with themselves or socially distanced outside enjoying nature and um, not just online looking for connection. So hopefully this uh, meditation comes in handy for those of you who do get on later and are looking for a little something to inspire you today. Okay, now let's do a little practice. We've got our bowl. Here we go. So closing your eyes and coming into your breath, drawing your breath deeply into your heart space. And imagine that from your heart is this beautiful web. Like a beautiful spider web that's extending out from your heart. And I want you to see those concentric circles that are part of that web's construction and notice the people that are closest to you right now on that inner ring closest to your heart, your immediate family, your closest friends. Your loved ones. And now draw your focus out to the next ring Noticing your more extended family, perhaps that you don't see as often, but who you still think of. And then move that circle out further to friends, friends from the past, perhaps ex-lovers, people that you haven't seen in some time, but you still think of and feel supported by. At least energetically. And now I just want you to extend that net. Just start extending that net. And in your physical location where you are right now, I want you to start experiencing a connection to the people around you physically. Those first that you know, your neighbors that you have a relationship with, whether it's a completely amicable relationship or otherwise, you're just gonna neutrally, compassionately and lovingly connect with them. And then keep stretching it out to neighbors and people that live around you that you don't know, that you haven't had a chance to connect with. Just see this heart web extending to hold your whole neighborhood. Perhaps mixed in there are people that you do know that you don't particularly like or get along with or feel comfortable with, but they are in your heart circle all the same. They are connections to you and perhaps it's a learning relationship. Perhaps the conflict you have or the discomfort that you feel is actually teaching you something about yourself. Growing you in a certain way or offering that opportunity. Allow that heart circle to hold them as well, that net. And now you're going to connect to the larger area that you live in, the city perhaps, or the surrounding neighborhoods. Imagine that you can see a bird's eye view of yourself in this beautiful web coming from your heart. And you see it spreading across your whole state or area of the country that you live in. And then you see it expanding to cover the whole section of that country. And you're just holding all the people in all their various states of joy and fear and depression, depression, ecstasy, 
kindness and compassion, all the ways they're helping, all the ways they need help. You're just connecting with them because they are you. They are part of your family and their struggles are your struggles. Their triumphs are your triumphs. Extend that heart all the way out to hold your whole country right now. Whatever country you're watching this from, you're going to hold every person in that country with your heart right now. And if, like us, your country is only one part of a continent that you live on, you're going to extend your heart web out further so that you're holding every human being on the entire continent that you're standing on, or sitting on. Expand your heart still further, remembering your breath to begin to spread out over the world, holding other continents and their people. See your heart web spreading all the way around the earth until you're holding the whole earth with your heart web. Stretching that net fully. Perhaps more strands of light are coming out of your heart to fill in these gaps in the net. And in this moment, you can acknowledge that every single human is unique. Unique and different and beautiful in their uniqueness, in their difference. And that difference can be our strength. And there are also ways in which every human is the same all branches coming from the same tree, the same trunk, the same roots, the same source energy, the same earth, all here on a learning journey, learning through struggle, challenge, discovery, epiphany, and connection, disconnection. Not one person is worth love, is worthy of being loved more or less than any other person. Not one person is worth being here, is more meaningful to the earth and to the sky and to the beings than any other. We all have the same potential, capacity, and innate ability to receive love, to be loved, to express love. Hold the whole earth in your heart. Now we're going to rub our hands together, whatever color your heart web was. Mine was golden, but yours can be whatever color it was to you. I'm going to rub a little bit of that sticky web energy between your hands. And you're going to make a little miniature version that you can see before you of this heart web, placing your earth inside of it. All of those people, all those billions of people living their beautiful, messy, singularly amazing lives. And you're going to hug them. Hug them with your heart. This web of connectivity, this net, so that they can be held and free, safe and free unique and different and one and together. And that you send that wish out that each person can feel that. Even if just for a moment, for a second, they can feel that. They are held and free. That they are supported. 
and liberated. And then scoop that into your heart. <sighs> Breathe that into your heart flame so that you can keep that intention today. That you will dilate your own net from your heart and you will hold more of humanity, even and especially those who you've been trained or socialized to feel separate from, or those who you feel discomfort in because of their beliefs or their judgments. You're gonna hold them as well as one of us, all of us together. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm gonna ring our bell. And I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye guys.